and make them suffer. Guys, so I just finished shooting this video I'm about to shoot now. And I feel so pain because, I mean, my head was cut off to this point. But that's not the issue. Let's just get right into this video. So let's talk about Blood Sisters. Blood Sisters is a movie about two friends become sisters by blood. <laughs> by blood of somebody, of human beings, right? Okay, so it is a story about two friends that become fugitives on the run because they killed somebody or one person killed somebody and then, you know, they rubbed off on the other person and somehow they became fugitives. So the story, let me just give you a brief into the story. Because I'm not going to be doing my regular from story to character to this. Is, I'm just going to like join it all together to make it a whole. Because I mean, if we start talking, there's so much to say about this movie. I'm not going to be here today. We're just going to keep rambling and rambling and rambling and rambling and rambling about it. So let me just go right into it. So Ebony Life gave us this beautiful series. I mean, Ebony Life started the year with if we king uh we chief daddy and we know what chief daddy did to us we were so angry but yeah they have come and they say oh this is our redemption room. please oh egg bet it to oh, you people <laughs> so yes they came with blood sisters and i think that i mean you can say okay everybody life has improved they've done better and we want to talk about all the did in this movie that makes it a O. Oh. so let's talk about the story um it features two friends and a dysfunctional family if it's just two friends a dysfunctional family and another family that is just desperate for money the dysfunctional family as potential as their mother they and me or Kona one as the middle child who is the favorite child and the favorite son um, gabriela folayo as the first child and a new face who i was really excited to see Genovi Genovuva, I think that's how her name is pronounced, I don't know. Genovuva who played Simei as the youngest child and a drug addict. So the first child who is Gabriela Falanya is the timid one who has been jilted of his role as the first child in the family because he's not handling the family business. And Deyemi is Kola in the movie, he is the husband to be who, who got killed and you know, he's an abuser and it's his mama's favorite child. And we have Timeni who is a drug addict and you know the drug addict and the one that exposed the whole family and scatter everything in the end yes so that is that family we have the two friends who play the blood sisters nancy sime and nidi malkoje they are friends they've been friends since childhood and their bond is so strong that not even mother could break them we also have in the Dimas family, our mom and dad, played by Uche Jumbo and I can't remember right now, but yeah, they are the Duru family. This the opening scene was my favorite favorite thing. It started off like one out to get away with mother movie. Yeah, I mean, if you watch out to get away with mother, you remember that the first thing was when they were trying to bury Annalise Kitten's husband, right? And that was how they started this also, you know, trying to bury a body. Yeah, so it gave me, I'm like, hmm, I to get away with mother. Okay, okay, let's see what you got going. And yeah, it started out really nice. Then we got to the engagement scene where we noticed that, oh, this husband to be is an abuser because he hits his wife. And then we have the scene where the ex-boyfriend, who was played by Ibrahim Suleiman, his name was Kenny in the movie, he comes to come and he wants to disrupt the whole engagement party and you know he's thrown out and blah 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 and all of that then we have the scene where Kola dies this is where he all takes off from but did I also had that um what's his name now Gabriela Folanyo who was Femi yeah Femi in the movie he has a wife played by Kelly Bancoli she is like Jumoke Randall in this movie she played this very supportive wife the brain behind the idea and all of that because people are flying is not really smart right so um he wants to kill his brother because he wants to take the position as the first child in the house and as the you know his rightful inheritance basically so they set up with a, an assassin killer who i think was the worst actor ever because why are you an assassin killer i mean i, I said assassin killer why are you an assassin? 
and you are walking around strongly feeling hmm, 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 hmm. like you want to go and fight somebody like you're supposed to come and do your job this is business for you this is not personal you're supposed to be eyeing the person and making eye contact that's why he couldn't even do the job. He couldn't get it done. Like one blue one is down. Like what the fuck, man? But yeah, that's by the way. He played a terrible role, and that is that. But yeah, the major focus are the ones I think this one, the ones I've mentioned. This movie is star studded. When I say star studded, it is star studded. It's a, we have what we call the stellar cast. Many of these faces are not new. We've seen them over and over and over again. And they, and in this movie, I think they all came together to work together and they achieved something so beautiful. So for the casting, I think the casting was perfect. Yes, I do think it was perfect because, I mean, when was the last time we saw a cast that was so good? I think it was King of Boys, I saw that last. And, oh, I guess Shikole 2 was really good. But let me not get into other movies, right? I think the casting was perfect. Um, and they all understood their roles. My top top favorite characters in this movie, um, I think Uchejombo is one of them. She came with this Igbo mother vibe and she did it so well, effortlessly well, excellently. Guys, Inidima was also another character that I loved when she came on my screen because each and every time she had the perfect expression. I mean, she didn't get so much lines. I think there were not even so much lines in the movie when it came to sisters, but they were just like gisting at some point. But they, she had the perfect expression every single time. Like she was clueless, she was scared, she was tired, she was frustrated, and you could depict everything from the way she looked. With the scene where they killed Kola, where she was clueless, like. You know, the look on her face was like, I'm not going to get myself into it. Do you understand it? You see the
Joker Silva. I mean, they could have done without Joker Silva, but it wasn't bad. We had Toya and Marco who came in as a savior during the old Oro scene. We had. Um, what's the name of this lady? This comedian lady, Wofai. Yeah, Wofai um, was princess in the movie. The one who. Um, what's his name now? Color had you know, plucked, up, plucked out her eyes or whatever he did to her. Yeah, like, those cameo scenes or those cameo appearances were very relevant to the movie. And that's why I always say with cameo appearances, like, don't just bring somebody in and how does this contribute to the growth of the movie or the series or whatever? And this ones, they were very relevant to the movie, right? And I love that about it. Um, what else about the cast am I not saying? I think the cast was excellent. It was very, very good. And each character understood their... Oh, Nancy. Sorry. I'm sorry. Ha! Ah, why did I forget Nancy? Nancy is the friend, like I said earlier. And I think she did absolutely stunning with her performance. It was good. Personally, I don't think I've ever been a fan. I mean, I like Nancy Simeon as ETV, host, whatever, whatever. But her acting, I've not been a fan. But this one was good. The only thing I did not really feel was the pigeon. I think that there were a lot of scenes where they could have used normal English and not pigeon. And this is not because I'm trying to say, oh, pigeon English is Raz or anything. I just think it is not a very serious language. Actually, when it's not your first language. I mean, if it was our first language in the movie, we would understand why they kept bringing in Pigeon. But like in scenes where, where they were very, very serious and she was bringing Pigeon in, it was cringe. I'm like, mm. but I mean, I have to get used to it because that was what we kept saying, Pigeon, Pigeon, Pigeon with her. But it wasn't bad when Inijima was saying it because the scenes, most of the scenes where Inijima was giving us Pigeon, they were not... Pfft, we were not really serious things. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm not saying pigeon is bad because I speak pigeon a lot. Do you understand? But yeah. Oh, another character that I, 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 I must not forget to mention. Wale Ojo and Ramsey Noir. So Ramsey Noir is Uncle B in the movie. He is like the one that does all of Kitensha's dirty jobs. Yeah, and you know, protects the family. He's like a it man, basically. He's the John Wick in the movie. He's the Ade Tiger in the movie. Yeah, so... um i think that he did well he could have done better but i think he gave us a very good performance also you know it was silent for like the first two episodes but his appearance always spoke do you understand so yeah i think he did well the only scene i felt like it, it could have been better was the scene where he went to attack the girls in the at Makoko. i mean that thing was just a mom. the fighting looked very real but I feel like for girls who are very inexperienced, they couldn't, they shouldn't be able to just take you down like that. But yeah, that's by the way. Um, what's his name? Wale Ojo. So I like the old, um, I like the old Chicago cop thing that they brought in. Personally, I liked it, but I think that they did not understand the role he was supposed to play. He personally, as a person. He, he bodied that character right he did so well he interpreted him well but that character in itself or that role in itself was not you know explicitly interpreted or he, they, they, they just overlooked a lot of things i mean for someone who has worked in chicago police department for is it 10 years or 20 years he said i expect that your experience should rub off on what you're doing it did not now i'm going to explain why i said so um, when you see a gun, in, I mean, you see a body, you see a gun, you see that the head is chopped off. So, it, I mean, on the body, you will notice that, okay, this person was shot. And you also notice that this person was chopped off, probably after they were shot and they were trying to, like, export the body. A video also surfaced that these two girls were carrying a body, right? Now, before the video even surfaced, when the gun came in, the gun came in, I expected that the first thing they would do is run a ballistics on it because I mean you're a Chicago police officer you should know better you should know that these things are like protocol they should run a ballistics on it who is this gun registered to there's one fingerprint on the gun on the clothes that they used to pack the body on the body in itself you know whose fingerprints are on this person so they can use that to what to go for that in their investigation but they didn't do that they just like swiped it off and 
I don't know. I don't know why they did that. Then the video surfaced, and I mean, it was obvious that these two people were the ones that killed the guy. So why are you now running off to I don't know, form rescue man or whatever they were trying to do, and you know, try to like find a blade? I mean, CCTV should have shown that blade blade already left the scene before the murder happened, before he went missing. So. That was just, you know, it just didn't sit well with me. And then the killing scene also, or where they were trying to chop off his head. Okay, so before the chopping off scene even came up, when they just shot him and they were trying to like pack his body to the side, their clothes never got stained. Like how? If you are amateurs, let us know. I mean, they tried to tell us they were amateurs, but we didn't see it in their actions that, especially Nancy, we didn't see it in action that she was amateur. She was giving these bad bitch vibes. I mean, I liked the bad bitch vibes, but not in that particular scene. That was the first, that was their first murder. That was where they were supposed to be the most curious. It is after they now realize that, what have I done? I think I need to, you know, embrace this madness that I have brought to myself and, you know, go on. But yeah, those are just, you know, little, little flaws that I noticed in the movie. But I think the cinematography was also great. It was like the angles, bruv. The angles were superb. I loved it. You know where they picked. I think people need to stop. You know, you know when you want to take picture, right? Eh? The angle that you stand with, that many pictures need to look. Or the angle that your cameraman takes you from, and the angles were good. You will see Lagos in a different light. It was good. The costume. Yeah, I loved it. I absolutely loved the costume. The costume was superb. It was it was good. It was good. I loved it. I loved everything. The clothes that Inidima wore, that one that Kola said she wore a change to. It's not because Kola is a bad person. That clothes was just given what it's supposed to be given because Inidima is a goddess. Let me not get too sentimental. <laughs> but yeah, the costumes were very good. We saw Kate Ensho in the light they wanted us to see her. This high horn person, you know. Oh, did I also mention that Ibrahim Suleiman was in this movie? He's the ex. I don't know, I think I've mentioned it. But yeah, he's um, what's that name's ex? In the demon's ex in the movie and died for love. Uh, we also have the good doctor scene. I think that was also very good. Where you know you are traveling on the road and you just bump into an organ um organ investor or human trafficking or whatever there were so many lessons to learn in this movie basically from paternity fraud to corruption because we saw it in the police department to um friendships and you know um violence domestic violence um and we also saw why we also saw situation whereby rich people or let's say rather poor people want to stay in rich families regardless of what it comes to. I mean look at Oche Jumbo and her husband. Regardless of the fact that her child told her that this person was beating she's like Maka one slap. Eh? You want to leave this rich man? Where are we going to pay our debt? How are we going to collect the loan? Then I did all of that. So yeah I think there were so many lessons packed up in this movie. I think it should have been maybe six episodes so that they could develop some other characters. Um, I loved um, what's her name, Timeni in the movie, but I wanted to see more of her. I wanted to see more of her character development. The nightmare she kept having. I wanted to understand why did she keep having that nightmare. So they made us see at the end that okay, he was trying to because she had like forgotten all the things that happened and you know the truths that she knew, but it just didn't it didn't eat home well. You know, they didn't develop that part of the movie. Um, what else? I wanted to see Inidima grow. I wanted, I really wanted to see her grow, but it is like she was, I mean, she interpreted her role very well, but she was just this loyal friend and clueless person all through the movie. She wasn't strong. I wanted her to, you know, see, when people go through tough times, you will grow thick skin with it, right? I mean, it felt like Nancy was already like already in, in a 16 mood. So there was that. I actually loved the switching pattern where Nancy was the one carrying Inidima at first, then I support his Inima that Inidima that is carrying Nancy. Okay, that was good. But I just wanted to see more of Inidima's growth, right? 
Um, what else have I not mentioned? So yeah, for the soundtrack in the movie, um, I think I love the soundtrack because there were a lot of like original, not original, sorry, there were a lot of Nigerian songs in the movie. We had songs from Aya Star, we had from Thames, is it Thames or Thames? Thames, we had from uh, Loje, we had from Fela, we had from Johnny Drew, and I think those are the ones I noticed. And you know, I liked it about, I liked that about the movie, the fact that they were pushing out Nigerian songs. There were a lot of foreign songs also, but yeah, just that about it. And you guys know I'm very big on soundtrack. When I hear a soundtrack, I'm like, mm, okay, you give it, you give it, you give it, I like it. So I like that about the movie also. I'm sure there are a lot of things that I have skipped, yes, but um, I think it was a great movie. I think you should definitely watch it. If I remember anything that I did not say in my review that I want to add, I'll put it in the description box. But yes, what am I going to rate it? I think it's a 8, 7.58. So in most cases, when I rate movies, what I look out for is um, the delivery. If you bring out so much tension, if you like create so much tension around the movie, were you able to deliver that tension? If you create a movie and make it look like in a very subtle way, were you able to deliver it in that subtle way? I think that's what most times I look out for in a movie. And I don't know what you look out for in a movie, but yeah, that's it. They could just so much tension. And I think, the, oh yeah, my the ending, I did not like the ending of the movie. Yes, I did not like it at all. And I think that's why, you know, it dropped from like maybe a 9 to an 8. Um, there were a few flaws, definitely, I mean. But I think Nollywood is growing so well. Oh yeah, there was something. If you watch Queen and Slim, sorry. If you watch Queen and Slim and you enjoyed Queen and Slim, the old um, what's it called, Fugitive on the Run thing. That's what they brought into Blood Sisters also, the Fugitive on the Run thing. We had a little bit of Game of Thrones. I mean, kissing on the lips. Mm, what else? One kissing on the lips. Are you Targaryens or Lannisters or whatever? You know, there was that. There was a bit of us getting remote that I said it in the beginning. There was so much part of King of Boys. Not so much, but you know. A part of King of Boys. We had the Kate Ensure's charisma, which we can stay all by herself. She was also this it uh, this person that had so much hatred for a son's wife or a son's family or whatever, which we can see in the Randall's mother. Um uh, Kenny Bancoli was like Jumoke Rando and Gabriel Afaraya was like the governor and Ade Tiger, um, Uncle B, sorry, was like Ade Tiger. So yeah, a little bit of King of Boys too. You can see it in the movie. And yeah, I think that's basically all I have to say right now. Yeah, this is the end of my review. I personally loved the movie. Apart from a few flaws here and there, it was a great watch, absolutely great one. Um, I've seen a lot of reviews on Twitter because Twitter is buzzing with blood sisters right now and it's like everyone just wants to say something. Some people are rating it like 3, some people are saying 2, some people are saying 4. If you rate this movie less than 6, I don't know, I feel like something is wrong with you because it was a great watch. People just like to, you know, bash Nigeria movies. This era is happening in Hollywood movies, in, name it, in, Brit in, in British movies. So many other uh, movie industry, but like when it comes to Nollywood, you're expecting perfection, and every tiny detail you want to pay attention to it, and it's not like that. There is going to be errors in, in the scripting, in the directing. There are going to be errors, and I think that it is just part of a movie. It cannot be 100% perfect. But this was good and I loved it and I'm sure you're going to love it too. So this is the end of my review. If you do like my channel, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you know when I drop a new video. I like to read from you so I want to know what you think about Blood Sisters in the comment section below. And this is me signing out. See we see you next time. Guys, pray for me. I feel so sick. Pray for me. Bye guys.